Good morning and welcome to Viewpoint, your program of personalities, politicians, and perspectives. Special kudo this morning. Special kudo to the folks who were involved, uh, particularly with Joe Shaler and uh, uh, Marcia Fernandez uh, doing the distaff side. We just recently erected a home in eight days. Well, both of you out there listening, pay attention out there. Eight days they raised that home from the foundation up for uh, a veteran. Uh, they call it a tiny home, and tiny it is. Yeah. But I want to tell you, it's a hell of a lot better living than a car. And uh, it's not only not only to build this lovely home out on the corner of Sixth and College Street, Sixth Street and College Street. Take a look at that. Uh, they presented that to a gentleman last Sunday, and it was a very nice ceremony, and uh, uh, nicely attended by some of the community. Uh, nice part is our fire department brought our big wagon out there and draped out a nice big flag down over the side of the whole thing. It really, really is kind of stirring to see that. Uh, not only did this veteran uh, get this house, but uh, by God, they had the pantry stock for him. Wow. Refrigerator and all. Uh, so uh, kudos to each and every volunteer. We had a lot of volunteers out there. Can't do those things without volunteers, folks. Uh, we need money, and we need volunteers, and both are very important. And so uh, speaking of needing money, if somebody's disposed to uh, help pay forward for the next one, uh, Joe Shaler, uh, you, you get in touch with him through Jim Ash up here, or old Bill Gossett. He'll be glad to... Well, I might take 10%, but he'll be glad to fund it more. <laughs> so seriously, uh, I don't want to make light of this. It was a real stirring Sunday afternoon to go there and uh, see this accomplished. So kudos to each and every volunteer. And by the way, Joe Shaler is down south. Uh, as I speak, and I believe he may be on his way back now, uh, it has to do with the Purple National Purple Heart Organization. Mm -hmm. Joe is one of our Vietnam veterans, and uh, we give him a snappy salute. Joe does a lot of things around here. Mrs. Busby. Did, you, did I tell you that my grandson brought his hammer and nails to work on that house? And he enjoyed the experience. So if you decide you'll help with the next one, You'll enjoy that experience. Yeah, I want to tell you, you, when you volunteer for something like that, you take away something that makes you feel better. Mm -hmm. right. So uh, thank you for your grandson. We have some don't, very don't important... Don't thank me. I had nothing to do. He just came. <laughs> 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 Listen, we have a couple of very, very important people over yes. here. Yes. Uh, I want to treat them with a lot of respect because they write tickets. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, seriously, they, uh, they're performing a, a, an excellent service for your youngsters your young boys and your young girls in our school system so go right ahead mrs busby well yes and this is this is where it all happens is officer christy frugge is a school resource officer for district 27. right so she gets the little people yeah. and the middle-sized people yeah. the middle size yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and tim butterfield is the school resource officer for the big kids that's yeah. correct uh, they, which it, it hats off school, to you. <laughs> <laughs> One at a time was plenty for me. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but anyway, it, this is this is when you're forming your ideas and your your whole life, and you got you got yourselves a big job. Now, as a school resource officer, what do you two? And I'm sure your jobs differ because the age of the kids differs. There's a lot of difference between a senior and a kindergartner. Absolutely. Yeah. So what resource do you give the kids? Um, first and foremost, um, protection as much as we can. Um, COVID um, kind of changed things for us. The, the protection part of it became a uh, little bit of mask enforcing and yeah. uh, things like that, which we both didn't expect going into you know a, a position like this. But uh, protection is protection, and that was the um, immediate danger for the kids at the time. So the last year and a half has been a real struggle with you know trying to get the kids through not just physically get them from grade to grade, but to get them emotionally through to the level that they need to go to. So um, 
we provide a number of things. Like I said, security is a big thing. Um, just kids that are struggling at home, struggling with friends. Of course, you've heard of um, you know bullying. It's a, a big thing that I discuss with my kids. Um, and your kids being your very yeah, own, you mean? No, my kids being my junior high kids. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, it, that's a big thing for us. We, but we pretty much try to get a handle on that as much as we can before we ship them off to to high school. But there's a number of things that we do. Kids come to school, they don't have uh, they don't have good shoes on their feet, or they have shoes that are too small and their toes are sticking out the front. Then um, we'll go and buy them. We'll go and buy them new shoes. Really? Um, yeah. I, I can't tell you how many kids and families that I have clothed over the last two years that I've been at District 27. And it was shocking to me when I came into the school. I'm like, I, I had no idea that this was such a problem. Oh. And I kind of made it one of my missions and went out and begged and pleaded with a number of people in the community and got some donations. And now it's, um, you know, somebody needs something then the teachers or the staff they know they can come to my office or email me and and we'll make it good and I'll bring the kids right into my office and we'll sit down and we'll do some online shopping and then all their stuff comes delivered to the school and it's it's like Christmas for them oh, sure. you know sure yeah. you know this is another face that we see of our police department in action here uh, Chief Paul Adams runs a really good ship uh, from my standpoint anyway um, you're interacting with the community in a very in a very necessary unfortunately but a very vital way we I have kind of stumbling around here because the old man does that once in a while but <laughs> they talk and nobody likes to hear an old man say not in my day but seriously <laughs> years ago when I was a kid in school I vouchsafe to say that a single parent was kind of a unique thing in those days. Today that's pretty doggone common. Right. And so therefore what you folks are doing in your roles in the school is working with the youngsters is kind of a, a surrogate parent f for these kids. Yeah. Surrogate mother, surrogate father, it makes no difference. And that has to be a very difficult thing. And another thing I worry about because of this COVID thing is educationally and therefore educationally it becomes a part of their of their psyche a part of their little own world we have kids that drop through the cracks yeah. because uh not everybody has a computer at home or if they do uh mother and or dad are not computer illiterate and can't help the youngster and so it makes it it makes a huge impact on these youngsters. This COVID thing is, I think nationwide, it's gonna, there's gonna be a, a big break somewhere in the development of our youngsters of those ages as they come along, because they've missed some important things in school. Right. Well, and, and the important thing too, is not just the education part, because that is very important, but the social aspect yes. of exactly. this. So yes. we're finding that a lot of the kids that went on remote learning last year are really struggling socially. Yeah. Um, we've noticed, at least I've noticed at the high school level, that the social media um, plays a big part in that as far as being um, cyber bullied. Um, kids now can't bully face to face uh, because they're not in school, so now they're reaching out via social media. And so Where that's a whole a will, different, there's a way, that's huh, right. Tim? And it's a whole separate evil, basically, with social media. It can be used for good, of course, but um, the kids that are stuck at home with no social interaction yes they still have their friends they still communicate but the school setting is very important um, of course for education but socially as well so we're missing that and those are the kids that I think Christy and I both feel that we're gonna lose these kids because you know I have every year I have 850 new sons and daughters that I deal with and I truly treat these kids like they're my own um, Christy said, you know, we buy clothes for them. And mm -hmm. before Christy had Grant, I would pay for things out of my pocket just because that was the right thing to do. Um, I've been doing this. This is my ninth year as a school resource officer. So I've been at Lincoln High School for nine years. Um, we started out the program with nothing. 
no guidance, no, I mean, literally nothing. They just nothing. made it up. You just yep. showed up. Just like, hey, we want to do this. Were. So they're like, well, who wants to do it? And so some of us um, were like, we're going to try for this. Um, the school decided who they would prefer, and it's all just blown up from there. But. You know, you see all this defund the police and removing school resource officers and all this, uh, just whatever. Um, it's more than that. We're more than just uniformed cops in a school. We care. We know we know school resource officers nationwide, and, and a lot of the ones from here in Illinois. Yeah, bigger schools have bigger problems, but we're a small community. It's not just that we're law enforcement in there. We're making connections with these kids to understand that, yes, Cops make mistakes. We understand this. Everybody makes mistakes. But how are we going to move on from that? Yeah. And, you know, we're not making mistakes. We're here for you, whatever you need. And I think with COVID and these kids being at home, we're going to miss a lot of these kids, especially this school year, depending what the governor does with the mask mandate, that could affect our kids again. Yeah, I had a number of kids last year that would end up in my office um, just struggling a little bit emotionally and how do I get through I'm struggling in this class I'm struggling in this class and I'd sit down and really talk to them and they're like you know I don't even know what my math teacher looks like I see her her eyes she, yeah. and I don't yeah. even know I may run into one of my teachers or a, one of the kids that sits next to me in class at the store or in the park I don't know who they are and socially I mean for adults we just deal with those things our youth is having a trouble having trouble like grasping how do i how do i handle these sort of situations and it's a struggle i and fingers crossed we're able to move past this new outbreak and get back into what we would consider normal um not for not so much for us as adults but our kids are the ones that are suffering so much in this in this whole thing it's changed the whole f focus, really, of your job, hasn't it? Yeah. You know, to our listeners out there, this emphasizes, and I mean this very seriously, sincerely, this emphasizes there's more to law enforcement than writing tickets and checking speed. Correct. You yeah. know, uh, these folks, uh, these officers here, have a direct impact on your kids at school. And for that, we should say thank goodness. Um, I tell you what we're doing. We're fooling around here. We're going to have the program on. We haven't come up with any commercials yet, so we're going to go to that <laughs> break right now. <laughs> right back live in the studios here at WLCN. The program, of course, is Viewpoint, the highly rated talk show appearing on WLCN 96.3, <laughs> appearing every Wednesday morning by demand, popular demand, people... <laughs> Ring the switchboard. Where's Bill and Jean, or Bill and Judy? Jean Whoever also. she is. <laughs> Jean's the other lady in my life. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. Uh, we have uh, Officer Christy Frege and Officer Tim Butterfield with us, giving of their time this morning. Uh, they're doing a lot of good for you uh, parents out there and your kids in the school system. Uh, and my time, there he goes again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There are some dumb parents out there. Uh, that we all we all recognize that, and they're the parents that would tell them, "If you're not good, I'll call the policeman for you," or yeah. something, or some negative comment about. And so the kid, at a little age of four or five, they pick up on that, and they say, "Oh God, I don't know what I am." Well, we have two outstanding representatives of our police force here. As I said, Paul Adams has got a good. He's got a good group out there. So, uh, Christy uh, Frege and uh, Tim Butterfield, we appreciate your being with us this morning. Thanks for having You're us. Welcome. Go ahead, Mrs. Busby. I'm comping too much of the microphone again. Well, piffle. Um, the truth of the matter is, you'd probably get hit with that, Officer Frege, more often because little kids are so impressionable. If, are. if my mom yeah. or dad said it to me, by George, it must be the truth. Yeah. You know? And it's funny, I'll go to um, some of the the elementary schools uh -huh. and just pop in, I'll walk down the hallways and I'll see a classroom is um, cleaning out their desks or, you know, rearranging their classroom and I'll go in and help and these kids will just stare at me and I have to make it a point to, hey, do you need some help with this? And they're like, yeah. Well, then it's like there needs to be 20 of me because <laughs> yeah. every kid wants, you know, Officer Jay's help. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah, I've been told always that these policemen have fire breathing out of their ears. <laughs> yeah, and absolutely. And now look, they're yeah. nice people. Yeah. Um, and I have teachers reach out to me and they'll, you know, just little things. Oh, I have some kids that are just borderline, could go one way or the other. Maybe if you just came in and talked to them about um, the best way to follow the rules and being a good citizen and these sort of things. And I go in there and I always challenge them, you know, like I'm going to be in touch with your teacher. And if she tells me you have two weeks of a good week and, and we don't have any problems, then maybe next time I come back, I'll bring cookies or something. And mm -hmm. they're like, oh, and it it's, has nothing to do with the cookies, but they they want to impress me and they want me to know we're going to do what you asked because, you know, I'm important to them. And it's it's so rewarding, so rewarding. Well, and they know that you're both uh, authority figures. Yeah, and they, know they may not appreciate side. it, but yeah. they are aware of it. Yeah, and it, it is a big respect thing. I know when I first started um, 20 years ago, 25 years ago for Tim, 12 years ago, <laughs> he's so young. point that out, so didn't young. she? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, everybody respected the police, it seemed like, you know, and when we were called for help, we were doing our community a service, and um, we're lucky enough in our community to still have that. But my heart breaks for, you know, officers in bigger communities where what there are Chicago, people. What about Chicago, where they're just yeah. shooting them wholesale? Yeah. It's sad. It's okay. sad, you know. And for the officers to show up intending to help people and, you know, they're getting shot at and they're getting hurt. It's, uh, I'm very thankful for the community that we have that, you know, everybody seems to be backing us and, and that that helps. You mentioned off the air before we came in here and mm. on the air about this bullying. Are you seeing, now you both, neither one of you are novices at this job. Have you seen that it's increased? Oh, definitely. Yeah, increased. What do you blame? Just the ease of social media. That's, you know, everything oh. that we deal with, not everything, but most of the stuff that we deal with is social media based. So anymore, you know, I'll go back to yours as back in my day, yeah. you know, <laughs> you handled things face to face. Now these kids, they can just send a text message or a Snapchat or a Twitter or whatever yeah. and, and degrade somebody and it's super easy and they don't see what that's doing to the other person you know and so if you don't have that peer-to-peer -peer contact you you're going to send a nasty message to somebody and you're going to think it's funny but you're not seeing what that's physically doing to somebody um, emotionally and mentally doing to somebody and so yeah you know the cyberbullying is extremely difficult and i know from a high school level we see a lot of that. A majority of my time is dealing with social media. Is that right? Yes. Interesting. Yes. Six four eight. Six four eight. Five five, five one zero. Oh. <laughs> I'm glad you know that, Mrs. Busby. <laughs> uh, our guest this morning, Cindy Fergier and Tim Butterfield, uh, officers going above and beyond the call of duty. Uh, yeah, they could be out on the street writing tickets, and probably that's part of their duty once in a while. But they're they're performing a very necessary service to parents and, more importantly, their kids. They're interacting with your child at the grade school, uh, elementary school level, and also the high school level, though, where Mr. Mr. Butterfield, Officer Butterfield, worked. Uh, who started this uh, resource officer? Uh, program I think it's a it goes nationwide of course I think it's a wonderful thing because it brings the boys and the ladies in blue in direct contact with our kids and I think that's very important uh, other than that why the kids think the officers all he does is run around on his motorcycle and write tickets and do silly things like that but uh, we have um, a direct impact on your kids and who knows uh, what some encounter uh, will do to change a, a youngster's direction. For instance, we're talking about the shoes. Officer Fouché notices a kid needs shoes. She sees to it out of her pocket that that kid gets shoes. Uh, Officer Butterfield sees something that's needed. Uh, uh, he will, out of his pocket, do that for the kid. 
very important things. So uh, I'm talking too long here. I want to get this <laughs> microphone back to Mrs. Busby, <laughs> who just found out about dead air. <laughs> <laughs> you learn something every day, That's don't right. you? Yeah, yeah. Are we as parents falling down on the job? I think so, yes. And I'm not saying this to be negative towards any parent because I can tell you that probably myself and Officer Fruge as parents, we've failed as parents. And I'm not saying that we've done anything intentionally, but you know, the age of the gadget, so the phones and the internet and the computers and all that stuff, I know that with my children who have been very successful, um, we've let them down, you know, they're up playing on their video games or their phones and we're sitting downstairs watching TV and we're like, you know, we should probably play a family game or something. So I think that parent involvement is the key to all of this, whether it's one parent, two parents, a grandma, it doesn't matter. But that parent involvement is very special with our kids. and. Christy and I have stepped up and we've become that with a lot of our kids in the community. Um, we want the kids to see through the uniform and just see the person. Yes, we, we're mandated to wear uniforms to work. Um, to show that, you know, I'm an authority figure, I'm a police officer, this is what we're looking for. But by the end of the school year, the kids see us as us and not at the uniform you know and just the joys and you know the kids will run up to us and at walmart and give us a hug in front of everybody and my wife's like who's that i'm like <laughs> one of many you know and i'm sure right. christy does the exact same thing and so we want the kids to see through the uniform see the person and it starts with the parents um, we don't like it when parents say you know like you mentioned before you, you're going to do something wrong and he's going to take you to jail the kid's six years old so we're now these kids are fearing law enforcement you know maybe there's been law enforcement calls to the home that's not what we're looking for but um, it's important too that they see you as police people right. that they see the uniform that they recognize the uniform and they know why it's there correct because it's it's a you know what are you going to do if you defund the police call your jeweler right when everything's gone to pot in a hand basket i don't think so you know you better you better appreciate that there are police people thank god and they're they're a necessary part of our society and probably will be more so as time goes by because you talk about the social media i'm sure it'll increase rather than decrease because it's a good source of revenue too right. yeah and uh, you know we got to start thinking about being people you know our police department offers ride-alongs to people if they want to come and ride with the police to see what we do uh, they can contact chief adams and they can get all that set up i wish because people don't really know what we do in no. the schools and even our own officers give us a hard time from time to time. Yeah. Um, but I can tell you, we're busier than the pe the officers on the streets because we're dealing with 850 kids all at one time. Um, and I wish that the parents could come to the schools and do basically a ride along with the resource officers, which we can't because of juvenile law. But I wish people could see what we deal with, and I wish the parents could see. You know, it may not be your kid. But your, your kids' friends are doing this. And so maybe we should start taking a bigger look at that. And I wish we could do ride-alongs in the school just so people get an idea of what we're dealing with. We, times have changed so dramatically. It, when my kids were little, I was at home, and so was Bill's wife. And now my kids have been working since they turned 16, you know? Mm -hmm and they always will and i think that makes a difference too because if you're if you're right in their face 24 7 they get sick and tired of your face and they right. want to do anything they yeah. can so that it doesn't have to be there they get this time you know um but it but it does make a difference it does because how do my how do my kids know that when their kids get home from school at three thirty four o'clock 
they aren't right on the social media, which is the source of much evil. Right. And there are a lot of adults who think it's that's where the news is, you know. I mean, they don't know what's going on in the world. They just know social media. And who's got a new banana bread recipe, which is pretty exciting. <laughs> it's not a bad idea. <laughs> Mark Coochie's was a hangout for the high school kids when I was a kid in high school. Nice place. Confectionaries, Cokes, and little sandwiches. And all. Very nice place. My father would not allow me to hang out there. His theory being that kids get together and something can, <laughs> something can just get started because kids are getting time on their hands, not much else to do. And so... Your he father's said, not too far off. Right. He said, <laughs> he, his theory was you've got more to do than loaf. Yeah. <laughs> and that worked out pretty well. He taught me at an early age about getting out and getting to work. So we are particularly lucky here in a small community, uh, Lincoln, Illinois, Golden County, to have the, the kind of a police force we have and our okay. sheriff's uh, uh, department. Uh, we've got a great sheriff and his officers up there. The, uh, the impact on kids, what... what do you officers talk much about you in your break rooms or something this defund the police thing? It's, you know, you don't think of that but here in Lincoln, Illinois. But think of the, the Springfield, Illinois, the Bloomington, Illinois. To talk about that and first thing you know, we can't, we don't have enough money for our microphones or our online cameras, which they were being mandated now yeah. and so forth. Uh, defund the police, does that have much of an impact on you? It, it Morally, does, I suspect. Um, it's like I said, it's heartbreaking. Um, and the issue is you bring up like Springfield, Bloomington, you know, bigger cities. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, if Illinois were to say, you know, we're going to have um, a big defund the police, it's statewide. So you're talking Lincoln Police Department as well, or a small department like the Atlanta Police Department, or, you know, any police department. It's, it, they're not picking and choosing. They're just basically in this state, this is what we're doing. Um, so yeah, we're absolutely directly affected, you know, when these sort of things come out. And it's, like I said, it's uh, it's scary. Um, it it's extremely sad. Um, when there was talk of removing police officers from the schools, it was, you know, if a kindergarten teacher asked a police officer to go read a book in school, they wouldn't be able to. We weren't allowed. You know, when that when that whole um, when the first draft came out. Yeah, it was horrible. I had staff members, teachers coming into my office in tears going what are what will we do what happens you know and i'm like this is why as a citizen you need to speak up you know speak up because nobody knows how you can tell me all day long how you feel i can't make the change you know so it's it's scary it's and hopefully we don't have to go down that road but it's well, still sitting there you don't have to think too far to see that, that that's a rather dumb idea. Mm -hmm. Six four eight five five one zero. We have Officer Christy Fruze and Officer Tim Butterfield here. They're serving you, folks. They're serving your children and your families. Uh, they're here to answer any questions you have. This officer's resource program is a is a great thing in in, in our school system. Uh, you mentioned a while ago. A teacher, I just see this now, a uh, young first grade kid sitting around, and teacher comes up and reads it. They're in their uniform, obviously. They're reading a book to the kids. Now that may seem like a simple thing, but in and of itself, it'll have a direct impact on you have no idea on how many youngsters. Yeah, so I've had a, a couple of kids come to the junior high and they said, um, you know, when I was in kindergarten, you came and read me a book. And I'm like, oh, really, that. what book did I read? And they're like, I have no idea because I was so <laughs> fixated on just watching you and how cool it was to have a police officer in my classroom and, you know, sitting on the rug with me reading a book. And that's all we could think about, you know, and that means so much. And it, it tells me that we're, we're making a difference. We're impacting these kids in a positive way. If they can remember years later, you know, that you were the one that that came and 
took time out of your day to read me a book so it's and it makes a big difference with Christy being in the district 27 you know the younger kids it makes a big difference of how they interact with me now oh sure so I have noticed I mean granted COVID's kind of messed things up a little bit but I have noticed that you know these kids coming from let's say the junior high react differently to me where before they wouldn't have so when I first started this you know nine years ago I had some real troubles with kids coming into the school from all over um, because they didn't have any law enforcement experience and if it, they did it was negative well so she's been like mama bear of all the grade school kids and so they're used to law enforcement and they come up to me and you know they'll give me a hard time about her and her oh, being sure. the favorite so now i've got to prove which that is true i'm, I'm the, the favorite pr- i'll be the favorite. <laughs> i'm always the better butter so it's okay that way um well, so uh, he, here's an interesting thing these kids come up and, uh, and they feel comfortable in doing that or they wouldn't do it as a kid will, will or will not do and because uh, officer butterfield and officer frege are are there uh, and their presence is there for a reason it works out well because these kids could respect our officers. Well, and you're a little bit like the healthcare field, really. Oh. I mean, you're you're doing we wear the many preventive yes. stuff by planting yourselves there, being there for them, caring, literally in capital letters, mm-hmm. about the kids, and they know that. They know whether you're just pandering to them or whether... Well, and our just our schools have, um, you know, counselors and things that are there all the time. A lot of these kids, you know, the counselor will say, um, I've tried and tried. I can tell they're struggling. They won't talk to me, but they keep asking to come talk to you. And then they come talk to me, and it's they'll sit there for two hours and just spill really? out everything that's going on with them. Um, And I think it's just, they know there's, we have a connection with kids that their teachers and um, administration, that sort of thing, they don't have. And not to say that the teachers and administration have a bad connection, it's just a different connection. Sure. So they feel good about coming to us and they feel like whatever I tell you is safe, I'm not going to, you're not going to go and tell everyone you're not going to put it on social media that sort of thing so um that's a lot of what we deal with too so we we play the counselor role and um i've taken kids that um you know to the hospital that aren't feeling well you know and picked up kids from school when their parents car broke down and they see this and they begin to see the bigger picture of what our role is and why why we are there. Well, and to bring up your uniform business again here, um, your very uniform says, I am an authority figure. Correct. And so if you tell them that this is how it is, this is the lay of the land right here, they know that by George, that's the truth because policemen. I mean, we've get, we've had incidents, but they are bad. They are bad shoe salesmen. You Absolutely. Know. Uh, but by and large, their preponderance of good darn people. Yeah, and I don't have people. the statistics, but um, I've seen them um, in the news where statistically nationwide the number of officer involved. Um, deaths or injuries to people it's it's very low um but people don't look at that like you said they they focus on um headlines and and what one one officer did that was wrong and there's times that officers do things that i look at them and i'm like that that shouldn't have happened that's that was wrong um but like you said bad shoe salesmen there's bad doctors Mm -hmm. um you know bad car salesmen Every profession has yeah. that. Everybody is a people. Yeah. And different people do different things in different ways. And you have to accept right. that fact. But by and large, if you're going to take just one occupation and set it aside, policemen would be the ones I'd be most apt to believe and pattern myself after. Yeah. You know, rather Six, than the four, shoe eight, salesman. Five, five, one, oh. Go ahead, Tim. You started to say something, sir? No, I was just going to say, it, it's more than just us enforcing the laws. Yes, when we come into these schools, our main objective is enforcing the laws and protecting the staff and the students. That's number one. That's why we're here. That's why we carry our guns. This is why we wear bulletproof vests. This is why we do all this stuff. 
but we literally do everything we this profession and even the street guys as well we do it all we're caretakers we're um counselors we're garbage men we we do it all <laughs> okay. we pick Change up stuff tires. off the street we yeah. do it all yeah and so yes you know law enforcement has gotten a really bad rap but you got to get the whole story and, and i'm not going to go into all this because i think we've all been through there but well social media has not helped yes. you at all because they'll get some incident uh that will happen on the streets of minneapolis or anywhere else and uh they will catch an officer doing something he shouldn't do and so what they will do they'll just re replay it replay it replay it and that gives the police a bad name uh six four eight five five one oh uh, uh, well, let's, let's address the gorilla in the room right now for a minute. Uh, drugs. Let's start at the elementary school system, District 27. You see much of that? In the way of what I guess society looks at as drugs, where you're um, you're talking heroin, methamphetamines, um, cocaine, those sort of things, we're not seeing that. Thank we're goodness. seeing. Um, the vaping is is a huge thing right now. The what is? Vaping. Let's emphasize that. Oh now. yes. Let's, uh, the officer uh, Frege, describe s s maybe two or three out there that never heard of that word. Describe vaping and uh, vaping and tell them what that does. I would does. be surprised if people haven't heard yeah. it. It's it's extremely popular right now. It um, it's basically a a nicotine. Well, sometimes they're called pods. Uh, there's a number of different names for them, but they put the nicotine directly into a vice a device and. Um, they basically it's it's essentially like smoking they're inhaling it's going into their lungs going into their system um, a lot of our kids look at the vaping as a safe alternative to smoking I'm not gonna smoke a cigarette mm -hmm. because it's dangerous I've been told all my life it's dangerous mm -hmm. but this vaping thing it must not be because people are using it to quit smoking and that sort of thing not realizing that it's affecting them more than what you know a cigarette would so that's for me and i think for tim too that's the biggest problem that we have right now and i don't see a lot of it at um the district 27 level but i hear a lot of kids talking about older brothers and sisters that are you know vaping and i saw a bunch of kids that were vaping in the parks and things like this um we don't see a whole lot of it where we're at I know it's there, um, and I know that there are junior high age kids that are vaping. However, it's not as much of an issue for us as it is for Tim because these kids, they get a little bit older. I think they uh, figure out ways to access it right. more than what the junior high level kids do. So he sees that a lot more than what I do. And it's, it's so easy to get. I mean, these kids are getting it. We we have kids that would, they've never smoked. They never used chewing tobacco. They're good kids. And when I mean good kids, most of our kids are really good. But these are kids that strive not to do anything wrong. And they're vaping just because it's cool. Everybody's vaping is what they say. And a large number of our students um, are vaping because it's easy but to in get the and beginning, it's horribly addictive. It was sold as as a health measure because now right. look, you don't have to smoke those darn cigarettes. You can vape. Well, that little cartridge isn't doing you any good, is no, it? No, and just the not. oil itself of what it does to the lungs is horrible. And then they personalize it too many yes. times. Yeah, and, so and they gear it towards kids. You know, fruity flavors yeah. and minty what flavors. What adult wants to smoke a cotton candy flavored cigarette? Mm. They don't. But they'll put a cotton candy flavored pod into a vape and these kids it's so it's it's geared more towards our youth and I always tell kids um, you know if you think that the big name tobacco companies have nothing to do with this jewel is um, jewels are a form of a vape pen it's a brand name the jewel is a brand name okay. um, the Marlboro company gave jewel over ten million dollars to help them get starting in their business. Well, isn't that special? Yeah, so. Well, because your tobacco sales are down. Yeah, and because so everybody these knows. These companies still need to make yeah. money, so they know what's. Branch out a little. Correct. Yeah. How special. Yeah, and, and I, unfortunately, gearing it towards our kids, mm -hmm. and, and that's well, what's troubling. That may seem a pretty innocuous, innocent thing to do, 
But the bottom line is that's not an innocent thing to do. No. No, and I tell these kids all the time, essentially, you're, you are a vaping guinea pig. Mm -hmm. We have no idea 20 years from now the long-term effects that it's going to have on your body or 30 years from now. The problem is our kids they have a hard time seeing you know past breakfast you know they're <laughs> really? they're yeah. focusing on sure. what am i going to do after school so mm -hmm. thinking long term for them is a struggle so i'm i'm constantly reminding them of that you know you don't know what this is going to do to you so and we have kids at the high school level that you know they're smart enough not to vape inside the school and we catch a lot of kids vaping in the school do you really but yeah. yes um and, and we write citations for it. It's something that we, oh, it's okay. it's very enforced at the high school level. Is that right? That, drugs, anything else. Um, but we'll have kids that they know, okay, I'm, I'm not vaping at school. I'm not going to bring it with me. And by the end of the school day, they're having withdrawals. Really? I mean, they're pale faced, they're ashy, they're jittery. Sure. They're 100% addictive. And these kids are like, I, I don't know what to do. I'm like, let's get you off of it. So, you know, there's kids that I'm like, give it to me. So I'll take it, you know, if they come to me voluntarily and say, I want to be done with this. I take their device, there's no charges, parents don't find out, school doesn't find out, um, it's just between me and them. And then they're like, I had to buy another one, here it is. You know, I've got kids that are bringing me three or four vapes in about a matter of month because they can't quit. And so finally we get them the services that they need and just come to me when you're struggling, come to me. And so these kids will be coming in all throughout the day like, okay, I'm, I need a fix. I'm like, well, you're not gonna get one, so let's talk about it. Well, that sure flies in the face of what I've heard about it's not addictive. Oh, it's horribly addictive. Horribly well, isn't that the yeah. berries? We're ending viewpoint on a very somber, serious note. Uh, Officer Butterfield has pointed out something, and then Officer Frigier pointing out something that starts in the grade school system, and uh, Tim sees it as they move into the district uh, uh, high school system. Uh, parents, be alert out there. Search your kids' pockets once in a while before you put them yeah. in, the, in the wash. The department bought drug test kits. So there are ones that parents can come and get. They can contact Chrissy or I or our department. Um, it's just like a need to know type thing. There's no law enforcement, no school enforcement, nothing. We're not gonna take your name. We're not gonna ask questions. Nope. They can come in and ask for the kit. We give it to them and that's between them and their children. And it tests um, for drugs and nicotine. So and I bet you say a silent prayer to yourself about thank you God that your <laughs> parent is involved. Yes. Yeah. We should have started this subject matter a lot earlier than, than we did. Uh, We're officer, gonna have you back. Yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> officer Christopher Zay and Officer Tim Butterfield, we appreciate what you're doing for our kids in Thank the school you. system. Thank you. Thank you for spending your time with us this morning. You're welcome.